Welcome in video 5 of financial valuation. We will start by making some exercises related to example 1 double prime of the previous video and this is uh, related to uh, securitization and in particular to pandemic bonds. After that we will go to example 2 and example 2 is also an example of um, securitization but related to longevity risk. So let us start with example exercise 4. We consider the financial actuarial world of example 1 double prime and this world is home to the market with the following traded assets which have been described in the previous video. Asset 0 is a zero coupon bond. Asset 1 is a stock. Asset 2 is a pandemic bond. And there is a combined security with price Y3 is 15. If you go back to what we have seen on that, this market was arbitrage free if and only if there exists positive Q50, 0 and so on, satisfying this condition. And this led to the market just arbitrage free and complete if and only if Y3 is an element of 0, 15. The price of the third asset has to be in the interval, in the open interval, 0, 15. Now, in our exercise 4, we assume that the price of the third asset is 15. So there is arbitrage possible. The market is not arbitrage free in this case. The question is then show that the following investment strategy gives rise to an arbitrage pro, uh, opportunity. Buy 100 zero coupon bonds, sell one pandemic bond, and sell two shares of the combined security. If you do this, uh, if you set up this uh, opportunity, this portfolio, you must find an arbitrage opportunity. Let's have a look very quickly at the solution. The solution is in detail here um, available, but what we have to prove it essentially is that this trading strategy, 100, 0, minus 1, minus 2, is an arbitrage opportunity. So it has to satisfy the three conditions. The time zero price must be zero. So here we calculate the time zero price. If you do that, you will see that it is indeed zero. The time one value of the asset, of, sorry, the time one value of the trading strategy must be non-negative with, with probability one. This is also satisfied, you can verify. And the time one value is strictly positive, larger than zero with a positive probability. This is also easy to verify. Then we come to exercise five where we consider again the financial actuarial world of example one with the same assets 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3. Now we assume that Y3 is an element of 0, 15. So that means if we look at what we have seen before, now we are in an arbitrage free and complete market because the price Y3 is somewhere in 0, 15. There exists a unique equivalent marking yield measure, so the market is arbitrage free and complete. Let us now have a look at a little bit of an exotic claim in this world, and the claim that we consider is 100 times y1 to the power i. So 100 times the value of the stock to the power of the pandemic index. This is a little bit complex, therefore I call it an exotic claim. But because our market is arbitrary and complete, we must be able to replicate it. So what the question is then is determine this replicating portfolio. Okay. Here is in fact the solution to that problem. And I make it a little bit bigger the screen. The market is arbitrage free and complete, like we said, so this claim here must be hedgeable. This claim must be hedgeable. 
So that means that there exists a trading strategy theta, theta zero, theta one, theta two, theta three, such that the time one value of this trading strategy is identical with probability one to the exotic payoff. Now we will work out this equality for all possible values of the state at the end of the period, the state of the world at the end of the period. All possible states are very simple, 50, 0, 150, 0, 150, 0, 51 and 151. We fill in these values for the value of the stock and the pandemic index in this equation, and we get this set of four equations in four unknowns. If you then solve this, how to do it, it's mentioned here. Uh, it's worked out here in some detail. If you do that, you will in the end find that theta is 15,000, zero, minus 149, minus 200. So what does that mean? It means, in fact, that we have to buy 15,000 zero coupon bonds. We have to sell 149. We have to sell 149 pandemic bonds, and we have to sell 200 combined securities. If we set up this strategy, that will be the trading strategy. And what is the price of this trading strategy? Is the price of the hedge is theta multiplied by y? If we calculate this, we will find. 4,570 minus 200 times y3. Then there is a, a remark that tells us we can also derive the price of the exotic payoff in another way. We will have a look at what is the value of this payoff in any possible state of the world. Here are all the possible states of the world, and these are all the possible values. The price of the exotic payoff is then the expectation under Q of this payoff. And we can calculate this expectation because we know the probabilities, Q50, Q150, Q51, and Q151. And we know the possible related outcomes here, 100, 100, 5,000, 15,000, 100, 100, 5,000, 15,000. If we work this out, we find this price here, which is exactly the price as the one that we have seen there. Now we come to a second example, an example on longevity risk. We consider a financial actuarial world with four traded assets. First of all, there is a zero coupon bond that we observe. There is a barometer of the economy. I will explain in a moment what this means. And there is a longevity index. The zero coupon bond has current price one and pays at time one also one. So the risk free the interest rate is zero. The parameter of the economy, that's a, param that's a claim that tells us, or that's a random uh, variable that tells us the state of the economy at time one. And let us assume it can be booming in moderate growth or in recession. And we will call them BMR. Okay, there is also a longevity index for a given population, which can only take the value zero and one. It takes the value zero if few survive at time one. It takes the value one if many survive. We do not define few of many, let's just few, let's just take few and many very general. Further in this world, we observe also a longevity bond and a combined security which with payoffs, which are functions of the barometer and the longevity index. We will see that on the next slide, or on two slides from here. This financial actuarial world will be modeled again in a probability space. Omega is all, is the universe, gives us all states of the world at the end of the year, and this is couples. And these are six couples, which the first component is the state of the economy, which can be booming, recession, or moderate growth. And the second um, component of each couple is, in fact, the value of the survival index, which can be zero or one. 
There are also real world probabilities related to any possible outcome of the state of the world. And we assume that each possible state of the world has a positive probability, so larger, strictly larger than zero. And we also assume that the, barome the barometer and the survival index are assumed to be independent under the measure, the probability measure P, we will denote this by P independence. Hence, as an example, for instance, we have this relation, the probability that the economy will be booming and that the longevity index will be zero, the notation for that is PB0, must be equal to PB dot multiplied by P dot zero. So the probability the of, the pro of the combined event, state of the world and, sorry, of the combined in event, state of the economy and outcome of the longevity bond is the product of the individual probabilities. And this is larger than zero as we, as we have assumed that any probability related to any state of the world is strictly positive. The traded assets in this world are the zero coupon bond as we described already. And then there is a special stock. It has a current price 50 and its payoff is 100 if the market is booming, but zero otherwise. This is of course not realistic, but it's just a simple example so, can, so that so we can easily make the calculations and try to find economic interpretations. The traded asset two is a zero coupon longevity bond. The current price is 70 and the payoff at time one is 100 times the index. So that means if many people survive, you get 100. If few people survive, you get nothing. So this is a longevity bond with the final payment at the payment at time one, uh, positively correlated with the number of survivors in our population. There is also a combined security with current price Y3. And what is the payoff at time one? The payoff at time one is equal to Y3, is Y1 multiplied by one minus I. So is the value of the stock multiplied by one minus the value of the index? Or we could say it is equal to 100 if we are in the state B0. So that means if the market will be booming and if few people will survive, you get 100 and it is zero in any other case. Of course, this is also a kind of security that will not be traded, very likely not be traded in a financial market, but it's just a theoretical example. Then we have to look at the no arbitrage condition. So in this market, as we have described here, in this market, as we have described here, the question is, is this market now arbitrage free? So we have to check the no arbitrage condition. Does there exist an equivalent Martingale measure P satisfying the four uh, Martingale conditions? Remember that the third asset, we give it a price Y3, which is a fixed deterministic number, but we let it be any value possible. Okay. Now, for this example, we have to solve this set of equations. If you do that in some detail, as mentioned uh, here, you have to work out this whole set of things. I let you do this by yourself because it's relatively simple. But then you will find in the end that the no arbitrage condition comes down to this condition here, this condition which is repeated on the next slide. So the no arbitrage condition tells us there exists QB0, QB1, QR1, so there exists probabilities Q, which set that there exist values Q satisfying QB0 is equal to Y3 over 100 and so on. So these are, the, these are the conditions. Now, the first thing that has to hold is that the values are 
positive. Positive means that each of this value here has to, posit to be positive, strictly positive, larger than zero. So that means that our y3 has to be between zero and 30. If y3 is in the interval 0, 30, 0 and 30 not included, the market will be arbitrage free because there exists a Q measure, but it will be incomplete because it has many solutions. Why does this set of equations have many solutions? Because we have six unknowns and there are only four conditions on it. But be aware, if our Y3 is outside the interval 0, 30, is for instance 60, then there is no positive Q that we can find here, and then there will be an arbitrage opportunity. Then you can also prove that there exists an equivalent martingale measure, Q, such that the barometer and the longevity index are Q independent if and only if Y3 is 15. So we assumed under the measure P that barometer and longevity index are independent. Will that also imply an independence in the Q measure? No, it will only imply this in the Q measure if and only if the price of the third asset is 15. Try to prove this by yourself. So we have a conclusion now. The conclusion is that if we work in an arbitrage-free and incomplete market, as in example two, it may be impossible to find a pricing measure Q that maintains the P independence property which holds between the barometer and the longevity index. And again, if you look at the previous slide, if the price was not equal to, uh, if the price was not equal to 15 of the, if the price of the third asset was not equal to 15, there could not be independence under Q. Now we have a remark. We have, a, in fact, an incomplete market, but the incompleteness is a little bit artificial. Why is that? We could combine the financial substates M and R of example two in a single financial substate MR. Why? There is nothing, there is, the conditions are on B from booming and on not B. Not B means moderate or recession. Uh, uh, recession. So we can just combine them. It's just because we add, we make from this combined state two substates that we lead, that it leads to incompleteness. You can easily see that also here. If you look at the conditions here, there is a condition on QM and QR together. So this is the probability that we are in the state M or R, that we are in the economic situation M or R, and that the, bottom, that the index has value zero. So we can just combine them. The reason for that is that there is no any asset traded in the market that makes a separation between M and R. Okay. Now, in that sense, like I said, the incompleteness in the market in this example is a little bit artificial. So in exercise six, in the following exercise, we will consider a less artificial incomplete market where it is also impossible to find the pricing measure Q that maintains the P independence property that holds between a barometer and a longevity index. Okay, let's have a look at this example six. So we consider the financial actuarial world of example two. We consider that there are the same market of traded assets, asset zero, the zero coupon bond, asset one, the stock, asset two, the longevity bond, and asset three, the combined security. And we assume that the price of the combined security is an element in 0, 30. This guarantees now already, this is in fact the setting of uh, some slides ago, this guarantees that there is no arbitrage in this market. Now, we will introduce a second traded combined security. Security 4, with current price 14, and the payoff at time 1, the payoff at time 1, is 100 times multi, uh, 100 times one conditional on R1. So what does this is? This means in means in fact it means that 
the payoff is 100 if we are in the state r1 so many survive but we are in the recession and it is paying zero in any other case so this is a first now we have to prove that there exists that this market of five traded assets is again arbitrage free but incomplete that's the first question and then we also have to prove in the second part that there exists an equivalent martingale measure under which the parameter of the economy and the longevity index are q independent if and only if y3 is 15. let's go to the solution okay first of all the no arbitrage condition in this setting there exists a q equivalent to p satisfying these conditions well if we have looked at example two we have solved this set of equations already if we forget about the red condition but now we have an extra condition the red condition so we can just write the solution what we found already for the blue part that's this part here conditioning with sorry with adding this condition here the expectation under q of y4 is 14 this can be related as 100 times q r1 is 14. if we now want to solve this set of equations well that's easy to solve and we went we find this conditions there must exist positive values for there must exist positive values for the cues such that this condition is satisfied so we find that for any price y3 between 0 and 30 there are an infinite number of solutions so our market is arbitrage free and also incomplete let us now go to the second part of the exercise the second part for the exercise was that we have to prove that there exists an equivalent martingale measure under which the parameter of the economy and the longevity index are q independent this can only happen if and only if the price of this third this fourth asset y3 is 15. well here we will not have a look at we will not consider the look in the proof in detail you can have a look at it yourself but we prove it in two parts in the first part we assume that there exists an equivalent martingale measure under which parameter and index are independent then the price of the, this asset y3 must be 15 that's easy to prove here and then the second part if y3 is 15 suppose that the price of this new traded asset is 15 then there exists an equivalent martingale measure under which parameter and index are q independent indeed if y3 is 15 the q's look like this and then we define q hat a particular solution of this set of equations where you can prove that there is independence as required let us now go to a last exercise exercise seven which is in fact the whole setting of exercise six so we have the same setting with all our assets zero one two three four <clears throat> but the combined security now <coughs> has a price y3 equal to 60. if you still remember the price had to be in the interval 0 30. now the price is 60. that means that there does not exist an equivalent martingale measure that means that there must exist an arbitrage opportunity the question then here is determine an arbitrage opportunity in this market in general this is not so easy to do because you don't know where to start <coughs> there is one thing that you can know and that you should uh, take care of and that's the following the security asset tree should have a price smaller than 30 and the price is 60 so the price is 
too high. So if you want to make money out of the no arbitrage condition, you will have to sell the one that is priced too expensive. That, that is a starter to find such an arbitrage opportunity. <coughs> Here, I will have a look at the solution uh, of this exercise. We will give a trading strategy, theta, here, and this is buying 200 units of the zero coupon bond, selling asset two and selling asset three, as I told you already, and that's it. And we have to prove that this is an arbitrage opportunity. As I said, in reality, you don't get the data and show that it has to be an arbitrage opportunity. You have to find one yourself, which can be a little bit complicated. This is already complicated in this exercise, which is a very theoretical exercise with only a few number of traded assets. Suppose that you have to look for an arbitrage opportunity in a market with thousands of traded assets. That's not a straightforward exercise, obviously. Well, then it's easy to prove here now that this trading strategy is an arbitrage opportunity. You have to check the three conditions. The price at M0 must be zero. That's done here. Secondly, the payoff at time one is <coughs> written, is considered here for all possible cases. This payoff at time one is always larger than or equal to zero and is even strictly larger than zero with a positive probability. So this is the end of this video.